Hello there, everyone. Uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and uh, I'm out on my Farron OS Linux system. Uh, hope everybody's doing great out there today. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we've got planned for today. Uh, what I thought I would do is uh, take a look at uh, Secure Shell or SSH, which is a means of communicating between a client and a remote server uh, for a Linux admin or just regular Linux user. It's a great way to secure your uh, connection, and so I thought we'd take a look at that today. And so let's take a look at that right after this. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm out on the uh, SSH or Secure Shell homepage, and it's at ssh.com forward slash SSH. I'll put a link to this down below the video so that you have it if you want to visit and take a look at this. There's quite a bit of information up here. Uh, it talks to you about the, you know who the creator of SSH is, um, a little bit about the SSH protocol itself if you click on this link here. Uh, you can... Um, see that it is a protocol for connecting a client with a server and communicating back and forth. Um, the way the mechanism really works is you've got a client, uh, which is, in my case here, is going to be the local uh, Farron OS uh, desktop. And then I've got a remote server, which is a VM of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS that will be serving as that remote server. And so we're going to connect from the client to the server using SSH. And it is a means of uh, communicating back and forth uh, in a secure, cryptographically safe manner so that if you've got people out on the network or outside, in my case on the LAN, there wouldn't be anybody outside necessarily unless they got into my LAN. Uh, but anyway, if they're sniffing packets, they're not going to be able to see traffic going back and forth. They're not going to be able to peruse keys and things of that sort. So it's a great way of doing it. Uh, there is a way of doing it uh, typically or normally, and then there's a way of doing it so that you don't have to supply a password. We are going to look at password authentication, and then we're also going to look at secure keys and eliminating the need for the password. All right, so you can take a look at the rest of this page. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, uh, but there's quite a bit of information up here. And then off to the right-hand side here, there is some information about the SSH Academy that you might want to take a look at. So let me get out on the terminal and uh, I have bumped up the uh, resolution here, or the font size rather, and hopefully you can see that uh, on the screen. Uh, I don't want to bump it up too high, but I think you can see it. So let's take a look at uh, what SSH is in terms of Linux. And so let's uh, do a man page on SSH. It's one of the quickest ways of doing it. Man pages are very good because you can get a lot of information from man pages. Uh, sometimes you can get more information than you really want, and then usually that's the case here for things like SSH because not only does it tell you what it is, uh, and it is the open SSH client, by the way. Um, so when I say SSH, I am referring to the open SSH client, and it is a, uh, a Berkeley software distribution general command manual that's showing us this information, uh, and that's based in Unix. And so here it tells you all about SSH, the description of what it is. It says it's a program for logging into a remote machine and for executing commands on a remote machine. Uh, and there's a ton of information here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and quit that. And instead of uh, looking at that, let's look at something called TLDR, which is uh, something I've started using. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me do the uh, clear the screen here. TLDR SSH. And here we have information about uh, Secure Shell. Now what this is, TLDR is, you know, too long, didn't, didn't read. It's a basically a uh, uh, compressed or um, smaller version of the information that you get from the man pages. Uh, and it's not as much information, doesn't overwhelm you. And so it says that the Secure Shell is a protocol used to securely log onto remote systems can be used for logging or executing commands on a remote server. That's what we're going to be doing today. And so here's the command uh, syntax that you use, SSH, username, at remote host. 
The username is required only if it, the uh, remote server or remote machine that you're logging into has a different username than you have on your system. Now on my Farron OS system I have Data Pioneer as the username and on my remote uh, server I have Data Pioneer as well so I will not need to use username when I log in. That's only if you have a different username that you, you need to use that. Uh, if you're connecting to uh, SSH using a private key uh, and you um, need to point to a specific key you will need to use this command. We will be doing that in this demonstration. Okay so let me go back to a clean terminal window here. So let's get back on the Farron OS system and I'm in, in the uh, Farron OS main PC terminal here. So I'm on my local machine or the client. It's referred to in the SSH world and I'm going to to remote into a remote server. Now I have a remote server out here that I created in VirtualBox and it's an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server. I've already logged into it but I'm going to go ahead and log out of it and log back into it. So you can see this is Ubuntu Server 1 and so I'm going to log into it with the username of Data Pioneer and I'll put in my password. Okay and so I'm logged into it now and so let me clear the screen. We're going to need to get the IP address of the server and to do that, uh, you can just simply type in IP space A. And here you can see that the IP address under number 2 there for ENP0S3 is 192.168.1.70 forward slash 24. All right, so the ENP0S3, if you wondered what that, what that is, for veterans, we used to, used to see ETH0 or ETH0. Uh, but ENP0S3 is Ethernet port 0 socket 3. So if you're interested in what that was, that's what that is. And that's the connection that we have to uh, the LAN here on this remote uh, server. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. So the IP address again is 192.168.170/24. So it's a Class C um, IP address. So let me clear the screen. Oops. And uh, if I can type today. There we go. All right, so let's go back to the clean terminal window we have. And uh, let's SSH into that remote server. And so the command that I will use is an SSH command. So I type SSH and a space. And remember now that if you have a different uh, username on the remote system, you will need to include that. And since I don't, I don't need to include it here uh, because they match the Data Pioneer account that I have right here. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and just simply put in the IP address, 192.168.1.70. All right, the first time that I try to log in to that uh, remote server, it's going to come up with this warning message that says the authenticity of host 192.168.1.70 can't be established. There's an ECDSA key fingerprint, which is the SHHA256 hash on that fingerprint and then it asked me are you sure you want to continue connecting well yeah or I wouldn't have SSH'd into it to begin with so I'm going to say yes but you need to do that don't say no hit enter and then it says that it permanently added 192.168.1.70 to a list of known hosts and it's asking me for that password on the remote server let me go ahead and put that in and I'm in okay so I'm actually in to the remote server because you can see here uh, it's pointing me to Data Pioneer at Ubuntu Server 1 that you saw earlier. All right, so now what did that do? Let me get back out of this. So what did that do on the local system when I remoted in the first time using SSH? Now there is a file called known host and remember it said that it added it to the known host file, that ECDSA hash. And so let's get into that. And the way to get into that is to cd into the tilde forward slash, which is a shortcut for the home directory, home data pioneer. There's a hidden directory called ssh. So it's a dot ssh. So I hit enter. And if I do a listing on that directory, you can see that I have a, host, a known host file here. All right. So if I do a cat on that known host file, you can see that here's the hash. Uh, that, that was uh, presented and placed in that known host. Now, so that means that in the future, 
from my Farron OS machine, if I remote back into that server again, it's not going to prompt me with that warning message, and I'll prove that. And so let me go ahead and clear the screen. And so let's do an SS. Let's go back to the. Don't need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and get a clean screen here back to the uh, home directory. And so I'm going to SSH back into 192.168.1.70 one more time. And you can see now I'm not getting the warning message, it's getting prompted. So what it did was it read the known host. It saw that 192.168.170 was already known to SSH, and so it's now prompting me for the password. So if I put that in, it lets me in. Okay, so I'm back into the system, no problem. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Okay, so you can see that we have successfully SSH'd into our remote server from the client, which is Data Pioneer at Farron OS main PC, using a password, and that's well, that's all well and good. Um, you can do that, no problem. Uh, but the only problem, though, that you, it does present occasionally is, especially if your password is not very strong, uh, there is the possibility that someone could eventually determine what that password is and could then use that to get onto your server. And in this case, it's just a VM that I created. But if that were a dedicated server that you know has a lot of information on it uh, that's critical to your operation or or, or your you know serving as a, you know a server with a lot of files that are you know important to you, uh, that could be a problem. Someone could uh, get on your system and use it. So. Let's replace that password with something called a secure key. And I'm going to show you now how to, to create a key here in SSH, or actually create what's referred to as a SSH key pair. And so to do that, we're going to use another SSH command, and that is SSH and TAC keygen. So SSH dash keygen. And then we're going to tell it what type of key do we want to generate. So we're going to put a dash T for type, and then what kind of key do we want? We want to use, a, in this case, an RSA key. All right, and then what's the strength that we want to use? We're going to use a bit strength of 4096, which is a very strong key. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the enter key, and it says generating the public private RSA key pair, an enter file in which you want to save the keys. So by default, it wants to save it in Home Data Pioneer dot ssh which is that hidden directory that I told you about and showed you uh, and it creates what's called an id underscore rsa key pair all right I'm gonna go ahead and select the default hit enter key here and then it's asking me do you want to enter a passphrase empty for no passphrase all right let me talk about passphrases for a moment um, you can go ahead and hit enter here and bypass this and no passphrase will be generated or required no passphrase will be stored in the key. Not a good idea if you're going to be using this key to go outside the internet. All right, so if you're going to connect to a remote server outside of your WAN, uh, somewhere else in the world, uh, you would not want to bypass this passphrase requirement here. Now, in my case, I'm connecting to a remote server, which is on my local area network or LAN. Um, that I, you know, created using VirtualBox, so it wouldn't be a big deal. So if I hit enter here and just bypass the passphrase requirement, that's no biggie. Uh, the only way that a person could access that would be then to get on my LAN itself, bypass my firewall, and etc. And that's not likely to happen, but uh, you know, it's not a big deal. However, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're connecting to a remote server somewhere else in the world, and so I'm going to use a passphrase here. So let me go ahead and put one in, and I'm going to use a very strong passphrase. All right, it's asked me to enter that same passphrase again. And it was successfully matched, and so I know what it is. And so you get this, uh, your public key has been saved in this location. The key fingerprint is, and here's the SSA, SHA-256 hash for that key. Uh, one of the things I didn't do is I could have put a comment on the end of that, and uh, but I, I didn't, so that's okay. But you can use a dash capital C switch, 
and then put uh, double quotes and then put like uh, data pioneer default key in, in that. And so that would be identified on the key itself. I didn't do that. So just keep that in mind. But what happens is it uh, generates a nice random art image for you here of your key. And so what did that do? What that did was if we're, we're still on the Farron OS system here. And so uh, if I do a CD into uh, the directory that is hidden and do an ls.lh, you can see that we have two new keys here, an id underscore rsa key and an id underscore rsa dot pub key. Now this is the public key and hence the dot pub extension. All right. This key here is one that you want to give to the world, okay? And you might even want to put it up on a server. Uh, we're going to upload that key to our server so that it has it, so that we can remote in without a password requirement, so that we use our key instead. Uh, but this is the key here, ID underscore ISA, that you do not want to share with anybody. That's a key that you want to keep private. All right? It's called the private key. And the reason for that is, is that's the key to everything. If someone gets their hands on the ID underscore RSA key, uh, then they can get into uh, your system that you remote into using that key. Now, how is it protected? Well, if you look at the, R, the ID underscore RSA dot pub key, you'll notice that the permissions on that key are as shown here, which is read write for the owner user, read for the group owner, and read for the world, okay? So that way the world can see that public key that when you give it to them, they'll be able to read it. Um, in a uh, notation, which, you know, or numerical notation, that would be seven, um, well, that would be four, five, six, four, five, six, so that would be six, four, four. So the read has four and four, so that's six, four, four. All right, so that would be the numerical uh, permissions for that particular key. So 644 uh, would be okay there. All right, but for the private key, there's a little more security needs to be involved here. And so you have read write for the owner and then no permissions for the group owner or the world. So the world can't even read the key, neither can the group owner. And so this is a 600. So you want to make sure that the uh, permissions are correct here. So this is 600 for the private key and 644 for the public key. All right. All right, so let's uh, clear the screen here. And uh, let's take a look at that uh, public key. So let's do a cat on the id underscore rsa dot pub. And so here's the uh, appearance here of the actual key itself. This is SSH RSA. And it goes all the way down to here, which it says the data pioneer at Farron OS main PC. If you don't put a comment on that key, that's the only way you're going to really know what key it belongs to, which is right there. All right. But the key itself is this first part, identifying the key all the way to the very end. And so if you wanted to copy that key out someplace to store it, you could. Uh, and if you want to copy that to the server, you could do that as well. Um, but we're not going to do it that way, and I'll show you how we're going to do that here in a moment. So let's clear the screen, and now one of the things I'm going to show you, which you should never do, uh, but I'm going to do it here in this demonstration because I'm going to destroy this VM as soon as I'm done with the video. And let's take a look at the private key. So I'm going to do a cat on the RS, uh, ID underscore RSA, and here is the actual key uh, itself for um, the RSA private key. And so it's a lot more involved, okay? It begins here and comes all the way down to the very end here, all right? So that's the total key itself right there. That's the key that you want to preserve, keep private, not let anyone else read it. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. Okay, so as I mentioned, what we'll need to do is we'll need to copy that key, the public key rather, up to the remote uh, server so that we can um, SSH into that remote server without the requirement for a password. All right, And the way to do that, there is a command that will let you do that. You could just copy the key, get on the server another means, uh, walk to the server if you could do that, you know, and you could just uh, copy that key into the proper place, but we're not going to do it that way. We're going to use an SSH command to do that. And so let me uh, change back to the uh, home directory 
get a clean uh, screen here. And so the key that we're, or the command rather, that we're going to use to copy that key up is SSH dash copy dash ID. And then we're going to tell it what key to copy up. And to do that, we're going to use the dash I switch or option. And so that uh, is an input file. And the key is the home directory dot SSH. And it is ID RSA pub. Okay, so it's the uh, the public key rather and so the IP address of the server is where we're going to send it and since the uh, username is the same we don't need to put that in and so we're just going to put in 192.168.1.70 I'm going to hit enter and it's telling us that uh, it's prompting us rather for the uh, password for data pioneer at 192.168.170 we're going to put that in All right. It says number of keys added one. Now try logging in to the machine with SSH 192.168.1.70 and check to make sure that only the key or keys you want were added. So let's go ahead and do that. SSH 192.168.1.70. Enter. And it's asking me now for what's, what's the passphrase for the key. Remember we put a passphrase into that key ID underscore RSA dot pub and dot rsa or underscore rsa so for the key pair so let me go ahead and put in that passphrase and it's important that you remember that now this was the passphrase here is what makes this a very 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 secure key because even if somebody can get their hands on the key if they don't know the passphrase then the key is worthless to them all right so let me go ahead and put that in let me retype it again make sure i got it right All right, and so I did enter it correctly, and it did drop me into the server. So I'm on the server, as you can see down here, Data Pioneer Ubuntu Server 1. All right. All right, so what did that do here? So let me uh, clear the screen, and let's take a look at the uh, location for where keys are stored here on the server. So let's change directory to the home directory to the same uh, hidden SSH directory on that server and let's do a listing of that and you'll notice that there is a file here called authorized keys it's a file that file did not exist before we remote it in with the uh, key after we copied the key up all right I didn't show you that but just take my word for it that file did not exist that file gets created on the fly by SSH once a key is up on the server and you attempt to log in and you enter the passphrase and you actually connect. Um, this, this file is created, all right, and it has permissions of 600 on the key, which means that the user, uh, Data Pioneer, on the server can, can read and write to that, that, uh, that file. But the group owner and the uh, world have no access to that key at all okay which is what you want because you don't want anybody looking at that key right there or a key file um, authorized keys file all right and so let's go ahead and do a uh, cat of that and take a look at it and so here what was put up there is this data pioneer underscore main PC uh, key uh, this is the public key that we looked at earlier all right so we copied, used the SSH copy ID, told it what key to put up, which is the ID underscore RSA dot pub key, and so here it is. It copied that key up there. Now, because it's copied that key, and because it's now residing in this authorized keys file under the hidden directory SSH, in the under the home directory of the user data pioneer on the server, okay, there's no need anymore to have a password. I can I can log into this server now using my passphrase. So let me get out of this, exit out of that, get back to the main PC. Let me clear the screen. All right, and so let me go ahead one more time and let me SSH into that server. So let's SSH uh, to 192.168.1.70. 
And notice, though, it's asking me that for that passphrase again. All right. Remember I told you earlier that if you don't enter a passphrase here, you're not going to get prompted. But I deliberately wanted to because I wanted to make it more secure. Because in the scenario here, I assumed I was going to SSH into a server outside of my public local area network and or my private local area network. So let's go ahead and enter that passphrase one more time. And boom, I'm in. All right, so let's go ahead and log out. And the server, clear the screen. Okay, so what can we do to uh, eliminate the need to enter that passphrase every time we remote into the server? Because, you know, we, we were using a password, and, uh, and now we've replaced that password with a passphrase. And so, you know, administratively, we still have the need to enter a passphrase every time. And, you know, you may not want to do that every time you remote into that remote server So with SSH. So let's, uh, let's look at a way of doing that. The way of doing that is using something called the SSH agent. And what the SSH agent is going to do is it's going to, once we load that into memory, that agent's going to sit there and until you drop the terminal session that you're in, um, it will sit there in memory. And when you go to SSH into the terminal using the typical way that you do it, which is SSH, uh, you know, uh, space and then the IP address of that server like we did before, um, rather than being prompted for the passphrase, the SSH agent is going to hand off that passphrase to the uh, remote server in the handshake, and you won't be prompted for it, and then it will connect you automatically. All right, so let's take a look at what that SSH agent is. So if I run in the val command and um, put the SSH agent inside the uh, argument for that particular command, eval dollar SSH agent here and hit enter. It tells us that an agent PID of 22114 has been generated. All right, let's take a look at that. So if I run a PS AUX against that and grep for uh, 22114, you can see that 22114 is a process that is running on the terminal and it is that SSH agent. All right, so that SSH agent is running right now uh, in the terminal. All right. And so what can we do to get that copied up to the memory so that we don't have to uh, uh, copy it up there every time or we get it copied up there any other way. So let's clear the screen. And so what I can do is I can actually combine um, this command into two parts. And so I can run eval dollar and then come back and put in the SSH agent here as the argument. And then I can do an and and, uh, which is the uh, the and uh, boolean here for this command, for the compound command. And then do another command, which is called SSH add. What SSH add is going to do is it's going to add the agent up to memory. All right. So again, you have the eval and then the dollar sign, and inside of that, the SSH agent, and then the and and, and then the command to actually copy that file or copy that passphrase uh, or the agent up to memory. All right. And so here with the, the at, at, at symbol, it's not going to run this part of the command unless this part of the command is successful. And that's what the uh, at, at, or the and and does. So let's hit enter. And so it tells us that the PID is 22399. It's a different PID, but that's okay. Now it's running in the background. And so it's asking for that passphrase before it copies it up to memory. And so here the passphrase again, I'll put that in. All right, and it says that the identity was added and then it added that identity as uh, Data Pioneer default. All right. So what that does is now the SSH agent is running and it's active and it is waiting for me to SSH back into the server. And when it uh, you know connects to that server, rather than me being prompted for a passphrase, it should just drop me in to the system. So let's take a look and see if that happens. Let's do an SSH 192.168.1.70. Seventy. 
and hit enter and boom I'm in alright so the SSH agent was sitting in memory with the passphrase loaded and when the handshake came for that passphrase rather than prompting me for it it just passed it off to the SSH uh, server on the other end and uh, made the connection for me alright and so um, that's how it works and so let's go ahead and uh, exit the server here and clear the screen and now as long as I don't close this terminal session I should be able to SSH into 192.168.1.70 and boom I'm, I'm in every time alright so what happens if I accidentally log get out of the session altogether uh, there is a way you can do that and the way to do that is let's exit here and uh, so let's uh, let me just go ahead and exit out of that altogether and now let me bring up another terminal another window alright so uh, now I'm back on the main PC let me bump up the uh, font size one more time here for you and so if I try to run the SSH against 192.168.1.70 again you're going to see that that's not going to work uh, well, that's not going to work that way because I put in the wrong S uh, IP address, SSH 192.168.1.70. You can see that it's asking me once again for that passphrase. All right. Um, so that means when I get out of the session, it the SSH, H, SSH agent uh, is no longer loaded in memory, and so I lose it. All right. And so uh, I will need to enter that passphrase again. and I'm in. Alright, so let me go ahead and exit here. Now how do I get that back? Alright, to get it back I will need to do the eval and just rewrite, in other words, just redo that whole command again. And ampersand, ampersand SSH add. Alright, asking me for the passphrase again. and it's added that identity back and now if I do an SSH back into 192.168.1.70 uh, boom I'm back in again so if you do get out of the session you just run the command again and you're back in uh, no problem okay so I hope this uh, video was helpful for you and uh, and I've enjoyed bringing it to you and showing you some things about SSH and this video we uh, showed you how to uh, use the SSH protocol to securely connect a client which is your local machine to a remote server in my case a VM that I created of Ubuntu 2004 LTS server and I showed you how to do that with a, pass a password and then how to replace that password with a secure passphrase connected to a, an RSA key that we created or a key pair and we uploaded the uh, public key to the server and then we used an SSH agent to get in the middle, to jump in the middle for us uh, using an eval command and, uh, and that allowed us to then not be re required to be prompted for that passphrase every time we connect as long as we don't drop this terminal session. Hope this was helpful. I'll put the link down below the video to this particular website and to all of the commands that I used in this video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you thought it was helpful, please hit the uh, like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Subscribe to uh, my channel as well, uh, Linux Unix channel. And uh, this has been Data Pioneer. Hope you uh, have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.